you can only scale to the degree that you can advance decision making to the front lines. Um, right. You talk a lot about this idea of a team that's empowered. And if the team doesn't have a vision for the product, and if they don't understand your belief systems, uh, human nature is to kind of wait until somebody comes in as an adult and says, this is what we're going to do. Because you don't want to put your neck out there and go the wrong direction. So talk more about this idea of empowering our teams to make these decisions. Yeah. And, and in a way, it is like keeping that magic from the early days. Because, uh, you know, that's one of the beautiful things of the early stages of any company you know, everybody's in power. You're all right there. You do whatever is needs to be done. I've done, I've worked in large companies and I've worked in brand new startup companies. And in this, you know, there's pros and cons to both. We all know that. But in the startups, you really are truly empowered to figure out all that really matters is figure out a way to make money that's, you know, ethical, <laughs> that we can really build a business on. And, and everybody is encouraged to uh, do anything they can. There's none of this not my job attitude, none of this. In fact, one of the things Bezos likes to argue is we want people to think like an owner, not like an employee. That is right at the heart of what we're talking about. Uh, and so empowerment is very much like that. It means um, instead of just command and control, telling your people what you want them to do, Instead, you do two things. You tell them what problem you need them to solve, and you give them the context that you have, as much of this context as possible. The principles we were just talking about is an example of that context, uh, but you give them the context so that they could make good decisions. This is actually another good company is Netflix, and they have the mantra, lead with context, not control. Mm. This is what they mean. Don't tell your people what to do. Tell them the context. Tell them the principles. Tell them the goals. Tell them the vision. And let them figure out the best way to make that happen. Now, there's some very practical reasons why empowered teams consistently do better. One of them is sort of obvious, the motivation, right? You're going to feel a lot more ownership if you're given that problem to solve. But even more uh, tactically on the ground, these teams are the ones working with the enabling technology or working with the customers every single day. So they're in the best position to see the best solutions, and to really take ownership of those solutions. So that's why, you know, you could pick your most, your favorite innovation, whatever it is, whether it's an iPhone or an Alexa device or anything. Uh, this is where it comes from, mm -hmm. empowered teams. It's rare that the executive or even the founder knew that solution. I have learned this and, I, and I've experienced the value of what you're talking about. And I've, I've become good at empowering teams and I've, I've seen the payoff. Um, but I want to go back and talk to Daniel Tardy 15 years ago when he was the founder and it was scrappy and cash flow was super lean and it was me and a, and a super small team. And, and this young kid had a lot of ego. He had a lot of passion and he, he thought he was really smart. And, and also he had a lot of fear about delegation and so I, I hear what you're saying, and I'm imagining a lot of founders um, can also relate to where I was early on in that we just believe that our ideas are really good and that the team may not come up with a better idea. And we like creating solutions. And we imagine these ideas and we're driving to work and we go, okay, I know what we're going to do. And, and we just drop it on the team and we say, okay, here's my brilliance. Now you guys go build this. And, and the fear to handing the ideation and, and the thinking to the team is, okay, I'd like to empower my team, but we got to make payroll this month. We got to keep cash flow up. If, if the team spends a month or two months building the wrong idea, we've got all that time that we've lost. And then I'm going to have to let some people go because I don't have two months to pay people and not get the next customer in the door because they're the one you know, driving revenue. And I think a lot of founders are in that mix of, I, yeah, Marty, I want to empower my team, but what if they're not smart enough? And what if it takes too long? And, you know, frankly, I think I might be a little bit smarter than them. Yeah. Yeah, this is normal. Uh, and luckily from, and by the way, I should say I had a lot of, the, I was like <laughs> you, uh, most of us were. Um, 
luckily, though, I had somebody coaching me, a manager coaching me, several managers actually over my career that have coached me in through these differences. Because, you know, as you probably figured out pretty quickly, it just doesn't scale. If, if you stay really small, it's really no problem because you are that person. You're already living it. But the problem is making that scale. What are you going to do? You want, when you're not in the room, where it happens, when you can't be in that room where it happens, and you want them to make good choices. All right. They're either going to have to call you on the phone for every little decision, which you will quickly start complaining about, or they need to know how to make good decisions. So that's really the only solution I know to scale. And that's that's what I think people, good leaders, invest in. They're investing in making that more scalable so that they don't have to be in every room, every meeting. And of course, even if they could, do you really want the people who are just there to take orders? Um, most of us don't. Uh, we often have a phrase in, in the tech community, which is we need teams of missionaries, not teams of mercenaries. Mm. Uh, mercenaries will just build whatever. If that's what you're going to do, if you want people that'll just build whatever, you might as well hire an agency, hire somebody and just pay them to do it uh, rather than having your own people. But if you want teams of missionaries where they are tr you know, true believers, where they are passionate about what you are passionate about, now you need to give them more authority. You need to give them more uh, autonomy. You need to give them more accountability. And that's where this come from, this idea of uh, making people think like owners, not think like employees. That's really what it is, this sense of agency. Mm -hmm.